I woke up three hours later, after pulling myself out of yet another nightmare. This time, I got to relive box tape falling to his death over and over again. I sighed and groaned as I dragged myself out of Sunspot's bed. I yawned and made my way over to her mirror that was propped up against one of her dressers. I took out one look at myself and was almost instantly looking away. I had avoided looking at myself for the past few days because I was worried that what I'd see. I wish I would have stuck to that now that I was seeing myself. I looked like shit. There was no better way to put it. I looked like shit. My eyes had sunken in since Aquila had taken over. My mane wasn't anywhere close to being beautiful. It was flat and lifeless. The red in my eyes weren't as bright as they were before, and I'd lost some weight. I know I always make a big deal telling Stardust uh, about him calling me fat, but that was mostly just me joking. All in all, I was a skinny mare by most accounts, excluding Wind Thrasher. She could pass for a supermodel in one of those old magazines for how skinny she was. Still, I wasn't a big mare. Even if I was a normal-sized pony, add that to my shortness, and I'd look like a slightly underfed filly. That was before Aquila took over. Now I could see my cheeks had sunken in along with my eyes. I looked like I'd been starved for a couple weeks. It wasn't a good look on me. I needed some cookies with a chocolate shake on the side and something greasy to go with it. Shit, I think this is the first time I've truly missed Sable 28 and its food. Damn, that stable had good food. And good cookies. I love cookies. Not cake. I'm not a cake pony, it's just not my thing. But cookies? Yes, please. Why am I sitting here talking about sweets? I asked my reflection. You know that most ponies would say that talking to your reflection is the first step of going crazy. Sunspot said from the doorway, making me jump. I gasped, then frowned at her. Damn, Sunspot, are you trying to kill me? She giggled. Nah, but if I wanted to do that, I wouldn't have said anything. I would have just shot you and walked out of the room. Then I probably would have used my seniority against Elliot and made him clean up your corpse. I couldn't help but smile. I don't think you'd do that. You'd get blood all over your room. Trust me, I bleed a lot. Duly noted. Anyway, how'd you sleep? She asked. How does it look like I slept? I asked her to turn. She shrugged. Looks like you didn't sleep at all, truth be told. You've got that right. I replied, going back to looking at my reflection. I've been trying to fix my mane as best I could. Anyway... Captain Gunny wanted me to let you know that we're just arriving at New Appaloosa, she said. I looked back at her. Are we going to be landing then? No, the pony we're meeting will be coming to us. She runs the shop in town and normally likes to come and get her goods directly. Since you're the pony who's technically the courier for the supplies, you'll have to deal with her, Sunspot said. I warn you, though, she's a ghoul, but a nice one. Oh, and she can't talk. I heard something a few weeks back that she had her tongue cut out by slavers or something like that. I don't mind ghouls as long as they're not trying to rip me to shreds. What's her name? I asked. Ditsy do. Funny, because I'd met her a couple of times before I was... She gestured at her strange body. Well, this. Ditsy do. That's the pony who wrote the Wasteland Survival Guide, I said. I always wanted to talk meter. I got up and started to head out of the room, all thoughts of fixing my mane forgotten. I was just going past Sunspot when she stopped me by saying, By the way, when you talk to her, don't call me Sunspot, okay? I go by Sunny when I'm around ghouls. I stopped and asked, Why? To put it simply, I was declared dead a long time ago. Ghouls were ponies that lived back then, and a few of them remember me, either for good reasons or bad. I don't like dealing with ponies from my past, so please just keep it to yourself about who I used to be, she said. All right. No problem, I said as I pressed the rest of the way past her. On the deck itself, I saw a small wagon had landed right in the middle. A ghoul pegasus was just unhooking from it. I'd seen a lot of ghouls ever since I'd entered the wasteland, and still seeing a pegasus one made me shiver. Their wings were almost skeletal now with only a few feathers still hanging on. Wings like that, that could still fly somehow. This ghoul was the same. 
But apart from that, she was a lot different than the others I'd met in the past. Most of her coat was gone. The skin that showed looked rotten and sickly. She had a little bit of a glow to her, and her mane was nothing more than a few stray straws, colored locks, holding on for dear life. When she turned to look at me, I almost jumped with surprise. One of her eyes was... wrong. That's the only way I could explain it. Her eyes weren't set the same. One seemed to be looking at me, the other was off skyward slightly. She was very creepy looking, even for a ghoul. At least she was until she gave me a gap-toothed smile and waved at me. She lifted a chalkboard that was hanging around her neck and wrote something on it quickly with her muzzle, then turned it so I could see what she wanted to say. Hi, I'm Ditsy. Nice to meet you. Her smile, for some reason, seemed to take away the creepy side of her appearance and replaced it with something friendlier. I moved closer, ignoring the slight odor that came off her like most ghouls, and said, It's nice to meet you too. I'm Shadowstar. She wiped away the last message and wrote again. That's a nice name. Thank you, I said. She wrote again. No problem. Now, I was told you have the supplies I ordered from Hoofington? I do, I said, looking around for Elliot or Gunny. Spotting the hybrid, and I said, Elliot, do you have the manifest? He looked over to me and gave me what I asked for. Yeah, bottle cap always trusts me with it, since the captain has a bad habit of spilling rum on them. Gunny laughed from the wheel of the ship. Aye, but they be making a good coaster. Captain Gunny don't want to be going around and getting rings on our nice desk. Things like that cost a lot of caps, they do. Didn't you steal that desk from an Enclave Raptor three weeks back? Elliot said with a knowing smile. That ain't to the point. Also, you can't prove that Gunny stole anything. He said with a smug grin. It's stole, not stolen. Elliot said with a sigh. Tis what Captain Gunny said. Stop your yammering and let's get this over with. Gunny said. Aye, sir. Elliot said. Anyhow, Shadow, all the information is in here, and you'll find the boxes and crates numbered in the storage area. Captain Gunny may not know a single thing about organization, but I've been able to fix that since I came aboard. I took the manifest of my magic and looked it over. Thanks, Elliot. Then saw what Ditsy had ordered. Let's see. Two boxes of ammo, one with energy cells, three with foodstuff, and one with... Notepaper. She nodded her head, then wrote... That sounds about right, apart from one box. There should be one with armor, too. I looked over the manifest. Again. I'm not seeing it. Either Bottle Cap forgot to load it, or she couldn't get it in time. She just smiled again and wrote, That's okay. Armor's hard to find. Not many ponies make it anymore. I felt a small pain in my chest as she wrote that. Silver was a mare who loved to make that kind of thing. One more pony with great talent who was gone now. I shook it off, then said, I know that all too well. Though luckily for me, I have a colt that travels with me who's great at fixing up old armor and making it new again. He's also great at upgrading it. She looked at my combat armor and frowned, then wrote, I can't see what's different about that armor. I couldn't help but laugh a little. No, not this. I'm using this until I get my own back, when I find my friends again. I'm very far from home right now, and my stuff was left behind. Long story. Don't ask. Where are you from? She asked. Well, wrote it down, I guess. New Pegasus. I'm a courier for the Equestrian Express. I said. Oh, really? That's amazing. I heard that you died. She wrote. Nope, I'm still here. Just got taken to Hoofington, of all places. I said with a small laugh. Silver Bell, the filly I watch over, would like to hear that. She likes to keep up with DJ Pony. She wrote, then wiped away and continued, Do you have a copy of my book? I do, with my old stuff. Though it's not great for where I live, it's missing pages. I said with a shrug. She gasped, then wrote, I'll be right back. She dashed to her wagon and came back a moment later with a book. She gave it to me happily. I looked down and uh, read what it saw. Wasteland Survival Guide. New Pegasus edition. She beamed as I took it. Thank you, but 
I don't have a lot of caps right now. She waved a wing at me, then wrote, First copy is always free. I don't need the caps. She wiped that away after a moment, then wrote, I didn't write that book for profit, but to save ponies. I smiled, then tucked the book in my saddlebags. Thank you again, then. Well, let me get your stuff. I helped her load the boxes she ordered, then took a huge bag of caps from her after. Elliot took the bag from my magic, saying, I'll put this in the safe. We'll be sure to get it back to Bottle Cap when we return. I thanked him, then turned back to Ditsy. Her wagon had caught my eye. It said on the side absolutely everything. So I had to ask. So I'm guessing you have just about everything a pony would need, huh? She wrote. Most of the time, yes. Though the sign is a little misleading. Would you happen to have a Pip Buck Master Key? I asked. She took a moment to answer. When she did, she looked sad. I'm sorry, but finding those are next to impossible. I haven't seen one in years. Yeah, I figured it would be too easy to just buy one, I guess. Oh well, but thank you, I said. She smiled, then wrote, Sorry, I can't help with that, but if you really need one, try looking in stables that are no longer active. I might have to do that. Thanks again, Ditsy. It was nice to meet you, I said as she went to hook herself up to her wagon. She wrote back, Any time. The next time I make a trip to New Pegasus, I'll look you up. I like making new friends. She smiled again, then took off. I watched her go until she was out of sight. When she was, Sunspot came out from her room and stood next to me. I took a moment to speak as the ship started to move again and asked, Why didn't we go into town? New Appaloosa doesn't like outsiders coming in recently. Something to do with a mare calling herself the stable dweller, messing up some trade they had with slavers. She replied, Slavers? That town is part of the slave trade? I asked. She nodded. Well, it used to be. Not anymore, though. It was how a lot of ponies made their living there. Though I think the mayor of the town doesn't mind it being gone. He's just trying to save face. It's a nice town most of the time, she said with a grin. Sure, if a town full of ponies willing to sell their own is nice, I responded sadly. That was another thing in the wasteland I wish I could put an end to. The truth was, I had no idea how. New Pegasus didn't have many slaves around it. But if you got past the city itself and talked to normal everyday ponies, slavery was a worry they all shared. With the Romans around, I could understand why. Sunspot nudged me, saying, Don't dwell on it too much, okay? Now, come with me and I'll show you how the navigation works. Even if you don't take to it well. It's okay, as long as Gunny thinks you're working, then we'll be fine. Okay, but when that's done, I'm going to jump to a memory orb. Our next destination isn't for a while yet, and... I'd like to kill time. Time away from Captain Gunny and his strange ways, if I can. I said with a laugh. At that moment, Gunny poked his head down and looked at us. Captain Gunny's ears be a flamin'. What are you talking about? Nothing. We both said in unison and started to laugh. 